Good morning, everybody. Um, don't worry, we will get round to our final part of Eric Cozy's chat with Professor Leo, but I wanted to share a couple of articles with you. Um, there's no doubt about it for most of us, the, the best lawyer um, <laughs> we've seen is in action is, is Kathleen Zellner. Um, there are some other really good uh, lawyers in America, obviously defense lawyers, one of my favorite being Brian Stevenson of uh, the uh, Just Mercy um, film, um, and very much has uh, set his stall out as being against the death penalty. However, um, looking at the wrongful convictions, you know, you've got the bad actors that, that caused the wrongful convictions in the first place, and the thumbnail features three of the worst. It'll be interesting to see if anybody can identify all three. Two of them quite easy. Third one might be a bit, a bit more challenging. Um, although I date it for you lot like, because you'll be very smart and uh, you know your stuff. Um, but yes, Kathleen Zellner, um, if you're guilty, <laughs> I'm going to prove it because I'm far better than any prosecutor at proving uh, your, your guilt. You'd be a fool to hire me if you're guilty. Um, so Let's have a look at this first article then. This is the one which she, uh, Kathleen Zellner tweeted about. Uh, it's this one here. Uh, and so, although it was a, a tweet from just three days ago, the actual article is from October 2018. Um, but why is Kathleen Zellner the best? So as I say, this is this is going back four years, nearly. But um, making a murder is back, picking up the stories of American convict Stephen Avery and Brenda Dassey. Uh, the ten-part first making a murder documentary was one of Netflix's biggest hits in 2015. It followed the case of Stephen and Brendan, both convicted of murdering Teresa. Both men claimed they are innocent and a campaign to pardon them picked up hundreds of thousands of supporters. Over half a million wanted that. Dog. <laughs> Sorry about that. The menace. So, um, both men claim they're innocent and a campaign to pardon them picked up hundreds of thousands of supporters. In the new series, series two, we follow the pair as they continue to try and get their convictions overturned. And there is one new character we think you are going to love. Kathleen Zellner has taken on Stephen Avery's case. She is a fiercely intelligent and method methodical lawyer who she says lives for the impossible cases. Her track record is hugely impressive. Zelna has one of the highest success rates for overturning wrongful convictions in the United States. So who is this woman that wants to prove Stephen Avery is innocent? Kathleen Zellner, 61, practices in Chicago, where she founded her law firm in 1991. Since then, she has overturned the convictions of 19 men, including a man called Joe Fitzif Burroughs, who had been sentenced to death. Kathleen Zellner won the case after convincing the real killer to confess. And there we see her in the garage. Steve's garage, removing bullets. It says here, Kathleen is a very hands-on lawyer, often recreating crime scenes to understand what actually happened. She is the only trial lawyer in the United States who has won five multi-million dollar, dollar record verdicts in the span of just 11 months. She will not represent someone she believes is guilty. In fact, one of the first things she says to her clients is, if you are guilty, I will do a way better job of finding out you are guilty than any prosecutor could. You would have to be an idiot to hire me and be proved guilty. Many of 
Kathleen's clients are pro bono, which means they do not have to pay legal fees because they have no or very little money. It was after watching the first series of Making a Murder, she decided she wanted to represent Stephen Avery. What you see on screen is a very hands-on lawyer. She recreates crime scenes carrying out countless experiments to prove or disprove the findings of previous examinations. These would normally be carried out by junior members of staff of her law firm. But this was a dream for the documentary makers, Laura Ricardo and Moira Demos. And there we've got Moira and Laura. And says Moira, look, Kathleen is not a lawyer who works from behind a desk. She goes to the crime scene. She gets her hands on the evidence. She does experiments with world-renowned scientific experts. What is fascinating about her process is that it is very unconventional and yet very scientific. scientific. One of the first things she did, she does, or I would say she did, was to buy the same car that Teresa owned to examine if the prosecution were correct in their findings. For goodness sake, leave me alone. She's a bully to jock. Here we see her out in the desert with the ballistics expert. Zana conducting another experiment. Teresa was last seen at the salvage yard. And her car was found there with bloodstains matching Steve's DNA. It was a key piece of evidence in the prosecution of Stephen Avery. So she carries out various experiments on the car with her team rather than sending one of her juniors and waiting for the results. Kathleen believes she knows who killed Teresa and it's not Stephen Avery. She is certain he is innocent. I have one goal and that's to overturn the conviction of Stephen Avery, she says on the show. It does not matter how long it takes, what it costs or what obstacles we have to overcome. Our efforts to win Mr Avery's freedom will never stop. There is no doubt Zelna is captivating to watch on screen, the same as watching anyone who is at the top of their field. Kathleen was incredibly gracious, Laura explains. What is interesting about her and Stephen's backstory is that for a number of years, Stephen, obviously through Sandy Greenman, was pursuing Kathleen. They knew about her incredible track record. She has a very vibrant practice. She was very busy with other cases. Years later, one of her clients, who she exonerated, brought her attention to the show. She said that when she saw Stephen Avery's reaction to the verdict at his trial, that really won her over and made her decide to take the case. Stephen Avery was wrongfully imprisoned for 18 years for sexual assault. Many think he was set up by law officials in Manitrop County, Wisconsin, who feared they faced a huge financial penalty over, over it upon his release. Yes, you can add me to that list. But those officials have always dismissed the claims as conspiracy theory. Making a Murder Part 2 is now streaming on Netflix. So that's nice that uh, clearly the filmmakers are impressed with Kathleen. But I'm going to stop share there and I'm going to find another article that I want to share with you. From roughly the same time period. Interestingly enough, so let's do this. Um, incidentally, I'll, I'll give you a clue on the on the thumb shots, the thumbnail. Obviously, we've got a certain Mr. Kratz. Um, I'll give you a clue. One of, one of the characters is associated with uh, David Rudolph. Um, and you remember in Making a Murderer when uh, Kathleen Zellner just talks about another case where she felt a controlled rage. I suspect this third person is the one that she felt complete and utter rage at. Uh, incident incidentally, Kratz isn't a judge. The other two are. 
you know, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, when you look at that, um, the statistics of all the cases that she's won. It's almost like the system is upside down. You would want her to be the lawyer that defends the, the um, innocent people first time around, rather than making millions and millions uh, by getting people, um, you know, uh, compensated for wrongful conviction years later. It seems a, a, a very, very wasteful system. Um, well, obviously, that didn't bother, doesn't bother Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department. Never in their wildest nightmares did they think making a murderer was going to come along. Anyway, let me share this one with you. Kathleen Zellner is famous for these wrongful conviction cases. Let me see if these dogs are going. This is by Mariella Mostov. Uh, just a few, a couple of weeks later. Let's see what she's wrote. Making a murder set the bar high with its first 10 episode season back in 2015. The docuseries, using footage compiled over 10 years, um, and actually covering uh, even more than that, covering from 1985 to uh, 2005. So, 20 years to begin with, but then it goes even further, doesn't it? Um, took the internet by storm <coughs> and triggered a wave of Reddit detectives meticulously combing through details of the case to, to develop their own theories of what happened to Teresa. The second season introduced a new lawyer for Stephen Avery, and these five famous Kathleen Zellner cases before making a murderer prove why his loved ones were so eager for her to take over his legal defense team. Making a Murderer Part Two dropped on Netflix October the 19th, um, which I'm pretty sure was Brendan's birthday. And it had to work hard to measure up to the first critically acclaimed season. season. Part two was filmed over the span of just three years and covered everything that happened in Stephen Brendan's cases between when the first season wrapped in 2015 and now. It was a much smaller time frame to work with and with far less material. So part two was in pretty understandable danger of feeling rushed or otherwise not as compelling as part one. But gauging from the early response, fans proved to be just as invested in part two as ever. He is more on the leading player, the centre of the second instalment, attorney Kathleen Zellner. Larry Eiler. Well, of course, we, we hear about him, don't we? Arguably, Kathleen's most infamous, infamous client was Larry Eiler, a death row prisoner convicted of murder. He died from complications due to AIDS while incarcerated before an execution date was set, but he'd previously confessed to Zellner, Kathleen, 21 other unsolved murders he'd committed, he'd committed before he died. While he was alive, she was bound by attorney-client privilege to protect her client. But two days after his death, she called a press conference and revealed the names and details of his victims. It's been really hard on me knowing all this stuff, she told the Chicago Tribune in 1994. I had these victims' families pleading with me during his life to tell them what happened. I couldn't do it. That's a terrible situation to be in. Your heart tells you to do one thing and your professional obligations dictate that you do something else. My heart always was on the side of the victims.
In 2002, she successfully vacated the convictions of four men who were responsible for the 1986 rape and murder of medical student Laurie Roschetti, according to the Chicago Tribune, after DNA tests of hair found on the victim didn't match any of the men convicted of her murder. Zellner told the paper, it is the last straw. There is no case left. Hopefully they will do the right thing and release them all on their next court date. Kevin Fox. Yeah, this was a pretty bad one, wasn't it? Um, in 2004, Wilmington, Illinois resident Kevin Fox was charged with the sexual assault and brutal murder of his six-year-old daughter, Riley, according to Chicago Magazine. Almost immediately, he came forward saying his confession was coerced by the Will County Sheriff's Office, but he spent eight months in jail awaiting trial before being exonerated by DNA evidence discovered by Kathleen. She also filed a civil rights case against the Sheriff's Office on behalf of the Fox family and won them a 15.5 million settlement, according to her website. Maria Casciaro. In 2013, Maria Casciaro was sentenced to 26 years in prison for the murder of his teenage co-worker, Brian Carrick, after a third co-worker facing a lengthy sentence in an unrelated drug case agreed to test testify against Casciaro in exchange for immunity in Carrick's death. According to the Chicago Tribune, he later recounted his testimony, saying it was fed to him by the prosecution, and Zellner yet again discovered more DNA evidence exonerating Casciaro that wasn't brought forth in the initial trial. In 2017, she told the Tribune that she was seeking millions of dollars in damages for her plaintiff. Jerry Hobbs's massive civil rights payout. In 2005, Jerry Hobbs called the police to report that he discovered the bodies of his eight-year-old daughter and her nine-year-old friend, according to the Chicago Tribune. He wound up being charged with their murders by Lake County prosecutors and spent more than five years in prison after signing a false confession. Although it was his public defender, Keith Grant, who found new DNA, DNA evidence pointing to another suspect, leading the prosecution, concluded that they couldn't prove beyond a reasonable doubt Dobbs, Hobbs' involvement in the killings, Zellner represented Hobbs in his civil rights lawsuit against the police. She eventually settled a case for $7.75 million, according to the National Trial Lawyers Organization, the largest civil rights settlement in Lake County. Captain Zellner's claim to fame is having righted more wrongful convictions than any other private attorney. And although she's still chipping away at Stephen Avery's case, making a murder a part two unveils some convincing evidence in his favour. Anyway, as I say, let's see if um, anybody can come up with the, uh, the names of the three, um, <laughs> three of the worst prosecutors in American history. Um, and as I say, there's a couple of clues there. Think David Rudolph, think uh, her controlled rage <laughs> uh, following one of the setbacks. Anyway, um, we'll get back on to that um, chat between uh, the dude and uh, Professor Leo soon. And I do hope that the, uh, the constant noise of these two dogs hasn't, uh, hasn't distracted too much. But uh, they, they are a bit of a handful first thing in the morning, um, but they are great fun. Um, anyway, I think that's uh, it. That's, there you go. Life is better with a border collie. <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> and what's better than, than a border collie? Two border collies. Anyway, I'm going to say cheerio. Oh, um, hopefully uh, I'm going to have a, a live chat with uh, a very eminent um, supporter of Stephen Brendan, hopefully Friday morning. Um, so uh, hopefully catch you, catch you all then. Um, bye for now.